take a, a scene comprises of a bunch of game objects. It's a scene graph um, type structure. So game objects can have uh, parents, uh, and the transforms of those parents impact the uh, transform of the children, just like in, a, in any other scene graph. And on the right here, we have the graphical representation of the game objects um, in the scene or in the game view. So this representation, I'll just load this project in Unity, actually. You can see what kind of things going on. So th this project that I've just loaded is, is a little big. It's got lots of uh, assets within, within my working directory. In order to kind of navigate around it a bit, bit more easily, firstly, I generally uh, kind of reduce the size of the icons to lists so I can see exactly what's going on a bit easier. By default, for some reason, Unity 4 gives you icons like this, which is a bit silly, uh, in my opinion. So I whack it all the way down. The other thing you can do is press here and you can filter by file type. So if I were now to hit scene, I will see all of my scenes. I'll explain what a scene is in, in a couple of slides. So if I had to load this scene here, you'll see exactly what I have within the scene. So I've got all the art. This is um, these are all the models, and the hierarchy, the scene, the um, the hierarchy of game objects is very neatly arranged, and this is quite important once you start creating a kind of even a small project, is to just have everything nicely arranged. So, for instance, everything under my environment art transform. A game object which just has a transform, it's at zero, 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 is kind of logically underneath it. So we have wherever the ocean is, uh, we have the sky box, which is, this in all, which is the main box around it, we have single trees, so this is all the environment art with, within that logically named thing. Because it's a normal scene graph type system, if I am to select the top um, the top game object in, the hier on, in this particular hierarchy and move that around, all of those uh, child objects will also be affected. Okay, so what is a game object? A game object is something that is in your scene, in your hierarchy. And that game object can be completely empty. Um, well, it can never be completely empty. It must always have a transform, which is a position, rotation, and a scale. And it can be either enabled or disabled. So in the inspector up here, we can enable and disable simply by clicking this box. Uh, we can place that um, game object into different layers. So this affects rendering. Um, and we can also tag it. Tag it is, uh, tagging is mainly for uh, kind of logically logically grouping things under a common name so we can access them within scripts. So every game object has a transform and uh, anything underneath the transform will be components and those components may be built-in components. So for instance in this case we're looking at a light, a point light and um, it has a light component but it may also be one of the scripts that you've written yourself or it might be uh, a script that you've downloaded from the asset store or wherever. Within the hierarchy, we have all of our game objects um, according to the specified hierarchy. And you'll see that this one here, this M017 underscore head, is in blue. And this is quite an important distinction between a normal, what we'll call asset, um, game object, and a prefab. Now, a prefab is something that uh, we have kind of defined as we finished this game object. I'm never going to change it again. 
or if I do want to change it, I want it to update all of my objects. Imagine uh, a scene with lots and lots of trees in there. You don't want to manage each tree individually. You want to manage every tree um, uh, together. And you do this by prefabs. So for instance, you would make a tree, you would make your game object, and then you would turn that into a prefab. You, you turn game objects into a prefab by simply dragging them from the hierarchy back into the asset folder. And that will create a file with, with all the information associated with that, with that prefab. So for instance, if, I'm, if I just go back here, we'll see that our um, environment collision is in white. So we know that that's not a prefab. So if I was to um, select my environment collision, and drag it down into my project box, you'll see that it's created this prefab, which is this blue box here, with everything um, in it, with ev everything from environment collision. You'll see that environment collision has now actually turned into a prefab because it's an exact match with the, um, the prefab within my directory. And therefore, I can now make lots and lots of environment collisions. And if I were to change any properties within within this environment collision, then um, all of the uh, instances of that prefab would then be updated. Does that make sense? In this case, we would never want to do that because there's no, there's no sense having lots and lots of collision uh, objects. Um, but that's the, that's the theory behind it. Just, just to be clear on the uh, order here, if you make changes to the asset environment uh, collision, then all of the instances that you're using would all carry that, that change. Yeah. But if you had made a change to one of the three instances, that, that would have been just that instance, yeah. So you can you can then uh, kind of copy across those changes by redragging your changed object into your asset folder. So overwrite the prefab, and therefore the other ones will be updated. If you see what I mean? I see. I see. Yeah. So that's a good way to save. If you do a lot of motion editing, you could save them separately in your asset folder that way, right? That's one thing I've lost by version control screwing up. Is it like if sometimes it loses the changes that you've made in the scene graph? Yeah, it's always best to. I mean, if you make a prefab out of it, then it's just yeah. If you save and, you and also make lots of prefabs. Yeah. You know, if you're doing something like animation, make a new prefab and call it. You know, the time that you made it. Yeah. yeah. You know, every 20 minutes, and then you've always got a backup yeah. that you know exactly what it's going to be. Because the the other way of backing up is you know you've got to. There's no real way of backing up because all of the information. Yeah. Yeah. So all all of the information is all of this information is stored. All of the information in the inspector is in, is then copied into your prefab. Yeah. But there's no way of unless you you know take a screenshot. There's no way of knowing exactly what you've got in the yeah. inspector. So prefab is definitely the best way of uh, kind of backing things up as well. <coughs> 